Now, earlier this week, we reported on the successful return to Earth of a NASA capsule carrying the largest asteroid samples ever collected. Scientists have high hopes for those samples, saying they may help bring a better understanding of how our solar system was formed. Well, Shirley Sitbon from our science desk has been looking into the findings and she's with me now. Shirley, scientists have opened the capsule and when they removed the lid, they found um, black dust. Doesn't sound great to me. Do we know what this dust is? They hope it's debris and dust from the asteroid Bennu okay. that they uh, travel to. And we can see some images to look back at this amazing mission that took seven years. This is the animated uh, image from NASA, of course, of the asteroid. And this is the capsule that captured, collected debris and, you know, dust, rocks, whatever it could, 250 grams of it from the asteroid, picked it up and then did this huge travel of 6.21 billion kilometers back to Earth to bring it to us, as you've said. This way they can identify uh, uh, what's on this asteroid. Why? Well, because what's on asteroids, we believe it's the original material of which the Earth was made, and this could help us understand, as you've said, the creation of the solar system, perhaps, and other people, and we can see how this was collected and opened uh, just two days ago, and yesterday as well. And these are images from, uh, that were released today, showing how they actually opened uh, this capsule, the first lid, and found this original dust. And then, uh, of course, that's the first part of the mission. They also say that another goal of this mission is to understand asteroids and what kind of threat they may bring to Earth. Better understanding that as well. So there are so many things. It's a very rare operation. And these images we're seeing here are actually exercised a test because they've been planning this and training for this in NASA, these scientists, for months and months. But this is what's actually happening uh, now. Uh, this, this is a test, but it's actually happening mm. also now. And what they're doing here is doing a purge, a nitrogen purge. Now, nitrogen is a gas that uh, does not inter interact with other chemicals. And this puts a layer like, around the debris, around the dust, and it protects everything that came from this asteroid. That way they can identify the elements, catalog them, and dispatch them to various labs across the world, maybe, and study them for weeks and weeks to come to understand what's in them. OK, Shirley, um, before you go, tell us about uh, some other space news, though, um, because an American astronaut and two Russian cosmonauts are on their way back to Earth right now, but they're running six months late. So what's happened? Well, there was a terrible leak. I mean, terrible. Obviously, nothing bad happened. They were supposed to come back six months ago after spending six months at the ISS, and they were ready to leave. But then there was this leak in the Soyuz uh, that was supposed to bring them back to Earth. They couldn't get on board. And we can see a tweet, first of all, from NASA uh, just before uh, they, uh, they left. They say, yes, 271 days, 5,963 orbits. This is really long, a new record for a U.S. astronaut. Of course, if they had gone into this uh, Soyuz, they may have not survived the return to Earth. So the Soyuz, they did take the MS-23. Well, it's in perfect uh, good situation. And they were brought back thanks to that uh, Soyuz. And we can see some images of their goodbyes, extremely warm, with a Russian commander who left the ISS. He was thanked by the new U.S. commander on board the ISS, saying, this was a great situation. In the six months they had there, the extra six months, they did so many uh, various experiments. They even planted tomatoes, from what I saw the pictures on the ISS. Anyway, it was a time well spent, they say. But they're thrilled to be back on Earth. Quite remarkable. Thanks very much. <laughs> Shelley Sipbon for us there. Now, uh, to